This video is going to cover how to put together a puzzle cube on Autodesk Inventor as an assembly. Now, I am going to be using a puzzle cube that I designed. Your puzzle cube is different, of course, and so it'll go together differently. It's going to look something like this. Uh, this is two uh, different isometric views of the uh, assembled puzzle. And um, we're going to take all the five individual pieces and assemble them together um, so that they look kind of like that. So this is what my puzzle is like, and this is what I'm going to be using uh, as my guide as I put it together. So you need the information. You need to know how the pieces fit together um, by either having the pieces there or um, having some documentation so that you know how they fit together. I've had students ask me, how do I put this together in the assembly, and they have no instructions, there's no documentation, there's no puzzle pieces, and it's up to me to figure out how they fit together. So that's not not ideal, not the ideal case. So that's what I'm going to be using as my guide as I build these. I'm going to go ahead and start with, you have to start with something. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the blue piece. So this is my, um, where we choose assembly for assembling this puzzle together. So we're going to make an assembly file instead of a part or a drawing file or presentation, of course. There we go. And now we're going to place the puzzle pieces in here. So like I said, I have to start with something. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the blue. So click place right there. And go up a level. These files are starting to accumulate. So like I said, the blue piece. So here's blue. Looks like that. And we open that. And there you can see there's one big massive piece right there. So I left click and that places that there. And it immediately wants to start placing more of them. If I just let this go, I can, if I click, keep clicking, I will keep putting pieces in there, but I've already put one in. And so I right click and I say, okay, that's good. One's fine. So there's my assembly. Well, <laughs> nothing's actually assembled to this. Um, I'm going to make blue my pinned piece. I want that to be pinned there so that everything else gets attached to it. So actually, it looks like we do it over here. Grounded. All right, so we choose grounded. And now there's a little pin right there. showing that that's my grounded piece. And it's aligned with my x, y coordinates. So this will be my front, because that's front right there. And I could change that later if I need to. So now I'm going to add the green piece to this. And another way to add pieces, when you're only adding one at a time, is you can drag them. So we'll go ahead and make that smaller so we can bring that in. So here's a file folder. And I can grab the green piece here and just the green piece and drag that over here and let go of it. So one of the things the students often are tempted to do is move this piece. Because I need this piece here to fit inside here. And this basically needs to move 90 degrees. And so the temptation is to come up here and um, use free, uh, free move and free rotate or free move up here. And it's really, it's not necessary. And actually it's, it's just, I find it just not useful and sometimes could be a, a bother to try and move it into the right position before you start to constrain it. So instead, we're just gonna go ahead and constrain and when I constrain these pieces, and here's constrain up here in the ribbon, when I constrain, I like to use usually three constraints. I like to start with the mate and then two flushes. You know, that sounds kind of like bathroom humor, but uh, what the hey. 
So we'll bring this over and here are our constraints, place constraints. And there's several different constraints, you know, besides mating, there's angle, tangent, insert, symmetry. And uh, here's where the two different selections are. And we're going to stick with mate. Almost everything you, could, you need to do in IED, you can do with just that one feature, that one type of assembly constraint. So here's mate, and then here's flush. Mate takes two surfaces together, two, takes two different surfaces, and mates them together. Whereas flush takes two surfaces, two different surfaces, and makes them flush with each other. And uh, I think that's going to become really obvious in just a moment. So we're going to stick with mate. And I want this interior surface here to mate with that surface there. And you can see how it's highlighted in red. When I go over this plane, it goes red all the way around. So we're never quite sure what part is going to uh, mate, but that is the surface. So I'm going to click that and it gives a little click and uh, it's an interesting it's it's sort of did what we wanted to do and that's fine uh, it doesn't look exactly right but we'll make it look right you have to click apply the next thing we're going to do is flush if i forget to click apply here and i go up and i click flush instead it'll it'll tell the computer that oh i'm sorry i didn't really want to mate I really wanted to flush, and it's going to change this. Watch what happens. See? It moves it around, and that's not what we wanted. We did not want to make that surface and this surface flush with each other. We wanted them to mate. So we'll go back to mate, and that's good, and we're going to click apply. Now, we need to get this thing to rotate. And again, I'm not going to use free rotate or free move. I'm going to use flush. So here's flush right here, and I need this surface to be flush with that surface. So that red box you see there is actually on the blue. It's the part of the blue that kind of sticks out. And I'm going to click that, and there we go. So you see this was the, that surface that I clicked on. So I clicked on this surface first, and I clicked on this surface second. And now they're flush with each other, and I'm happy. So I'm going to click apply and that looks good, except there's this big overlap here and there's a big gap here. So we've got to do something about it. So I head over to my navigation cube and I can see that these two surfaces are not flush and they need to be. So we're still on flush. So I'm going to choose that one and that one and voila, they're now flush with each other. And I click apply. So let's go back to our home view. And that looks really good. So we're going to grab a piece, the orange piece, and bring that over here and drop it right there. And we need the other side of this orange piece to mate with the other side of this green. So let's spin it around first so that we can see. So this surface of the orange needs to come up against this surface of the green. So we click on constraints and we're still on mate. So that one and that one. And the orange one will move because the blue one is pinned in place. And that looks good. That looks great. So we hit apply. And now we're going to use flush to make this one and this one flush with each other. And we click apply and it looks really good, but it's never perfect. There's always a little something off. So, I already made these two surfaces flush with each other, and I know there's a mating going on right here. So I'm going to go ahead and make the top two flush. That one and that one. That moved it just a teeny bit, and now we're in good shape. So, there we go. Our puzzle cube is starting to come together. We have three of the five pieces all together there. So time to move in another piece this is the red piece. So I'm going to click on that in the file folder, drag it into our assembly, 
and it's the far side of this piece, the one opposite this wall, the opposite this surface. We need that one to mate with these two. So do we pick the orange or do we pick the blue? Yeah, it doesn't really matter that much. If I pick the orange, it could end up way up here. And we can move it down. Um, even if I pick the blue, it's not going to be perfect. So you can kind of go either way on this one. So I'm going to pick the blue just to see what happens. So we're on mate. I pick that surface there. That was my first one. That was surface number one. Now I need to pick surface number two. So I need to turn this around. And surface number two is this one. All right, that's very close to what, we, uh, what we're going to have, what we need. So we hit apply. Now flush to get this surface flush with this surface. Very good. Click apply. And we can see that it's up a little bit right there. So if I click this corner, we can see that there's that these two should be flush with each other. So click that red surface there, that orange surface there. And now these two surfaces that are discolored momentarily um, have now a flush constraint. And I like it, so I'm going to click Apply. And wow, look at that. Already we have four of our five pieces. So now we need the yellow piece. And the yellow piece is going to fit across here and down here. And that's where the yellow piece needs to go. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this in this direction instead of the home view and grab the yellow piece and drag that over. Very good. So the yellow piece needs to go up here and it's this that surface there. Let's turn this a little bit. So this surface right here or I could be that surface with this surface. That'll work. So constrain. You know, you have to look at these carefully. Think about them three-dimensionally. It's very helpful to have the cubes right there in front of you, uh, the individual puzzle pieces for your cube right there in front of you. And you can kind of feel and see how they fit together. Um, that's a lot more, um, a lot more advantageous than just going from a picture. But you can do it from a picture like we're doing here. So we're going to click on the red surface and then this yellow surface. And that's great. That's what we wanted. We can see that this part that sticks down here, if we spin it around, it's going to fit right there. So that'll work really well. So we click Apply. Now, I usually I do fl uh, uh, Mate, Flush, Flush. But I think, I think I'm going to make a change. and I'm going to stick with Mate. And I'm going to stick, I'm going to click on this surface right here. And then I'm going to click on the other side of this orange so that this surface and that surface uh, mate with each other. And that'll spin this piece all the way around. So click there, click there, and there we go. Click apply. Now we need the flush. So this surface and this surface are obviously not aligned with each other. So I'm going to click this yellow one. You can see the red line going all the way around it. Click. And now this red surface with its red line. And you can see they're discolored now. And this surface and this surface are now flush with each other. We click Apply. And we're done. There is our puzzle cube. All assembled, no gaps, no weird features, no uh, odd shapes. Uh, looks great. Let's cancel the constraints and we're done.